he started one of the first known cults in Oregon history. His name? Edmund Crefield. The German immigrant came to Corvallis in the early 1900s working for the Salvation Army. But in 1903, he formed his own church he called the Brides of Christ Church. It was widely regarded as a cult in town. Still, dozens of women, many of them wealthy, abandoned their families to join Edmund. Some even brought their children with them. He sees himself as the second coming of Jesus, and they see him as Jesus. Um, some tell people that he is Jesus, and he stages these elaborate uh, services with chanting and singing and him preaching. During services, the congregation would roll on the ground, writhing in excitement. This led others to refer to Edmund's followers as the Holy Rollers. Edmund was very charismatic, flashy, and charming, but he was a charlatan and fraud and preyed upon the most vulnerable. And soon stories develop about uh, Mr. Crepfield being uh, quite the Lothario and taking uh, liberties with many of the women in his congregation. That did not impress the husbands, fathers, and brothers of the women who joined the Brides of Christ Church. One night, an angry mob tarred and feathered Edmund. He survived. It does not scare him out of town, and, and it, perhaps it also motivates him. Right after the attack, Edmund married one of his parishioners, Maud Hurt. And it said that at the wedding, one could smell tar. Uh, he had was soon after he had been tarred and feathered and he had perhaps not cleaned himself up enough. Edmund was also allegedly involved in a romantic relationship with his new bride's mother, Sarah Hurt, and another woman in town too. Adultery was a crime and prosecutable by law, so authorities set out to arrest Edmund. He went on the run and without their cult leader, the Brides of Christ inevitably split up. Some of the women were sent to insane asylums, and children who didn't have fathers were sent to orphanages. Meanwhile, Edmund did his best to hide from police. He hides under a house, uh, trying to avoid arrest for the crime of adultery. Eventually is found under Sarah Hertz's house in Corvallis, uh, naked, hiding under the house, trying to avoid capture. Is tried for adultery, convicted, and serves uh, a year and a half or so in prison for adultery. After getting out of prison in 1906, Edmund tried to get the Holy Rollers back together. That sent the community into an uproar. Again, it's suspected that he has taken liberties with all these women who are part of his congregation. So the men in town escalated their plans of retaliation. A man whose wife had joined the cult found Edmund hiding out on the Oregon coast. He tried to shoot Edmund, but the gun misfired. After this incident in Newport, Crefield is a little more concerned for his life. So he flees Oregon and he heads to Seattle with Maud, his wife. This is where Edmund's luck ran out. An angry relative of one of Edmund's followers tracked the cult leader down and shot him dead. The vigilante was the older brother of 16-year-old Esther Mitchell, who was rumored to be Edmund's next bride. George Mitchell went on trial for murder, but with a jury that was not sympathetic to Edmund Crefield, Mitchell was acquitted. But the story does not end there. A few days after the trial, Mitchell himself was murdered, shot and killed by his 16-year-old sister, Esther. As punishment, Esther was placed in an asylum, and the Brides of Christ Church was effectively over, closing a chapter on perhaps the most infamous cult in Oregon history.